It's been 80 years since the famous Budweiser Clydesdales first found their place in American culture. It was April 7, 1933, when they were formally introduced to celebrate the repeal of Prohibition. They're commonly referred to as gentle giants, generally tame, majestic in size and stature, full of personality, and thanks to Budweiser, a symbol of high quality and American greatness. When you say but you said it all. When you say but you said it all. John Soto has raised Clydesdales for Anheuser Busch for 34 years. He lives on this 340-acre ranch in the tiny town of Boonville, Missouri. It's here at the Warm Springs Ranch where John and his team manage the breeding of future Budweiser Clydesdales. I'm the supervisor here at Warm Springs Ranch, which is the breeding center for the Budweiser Clydesdales. Uh, we've been here at Warm Springs Ranch in Boonville for, uh, since uh, October of 08 is when we started bringing the, the horses in here when we opened up the, the facility. But when I first got hired, I actually traveled with the West Coast Hitch for five years, and then I started staying home and breaking colts, some of our young horses. Um, and then we added the breeding operation, which is what I really always wanted to do, um, in 1990 to, to California. And, um, and then been doing that ever since. There are about 100 Clydesdales on the property at any given time. This 25,000 square foot barn has just about everything you could think of. The moment a baby Clydesdale is ready to be born, John gets a phone call. What we have is this little, this little system, and so what you do is you actually suture it to the back of the mare. And so whenever the foal starts to come out, which would be the feet, and everything starts to spread, because one goes to one side and one goes to the other of the birth canal, so then this will pop out. Okay, so that goes off in here, and then what it does, it's got an auto dialer right above it. Let me shut that off. And then... <laughs> And that's why, I mean, when I hear that, that's the only ringtone, when I hear that, even if I'm in the shower, if I'm whatever, I know I got a baby on the way. This, this is our newest addition. This is Paris. Um, her mom's Pebbles. This is, this is Pebbles. She's four, and this is her first baby, and she's 10 days old. While as many as 40 Clydesdale foals are born at Warm Springs Ranch each season, not every Clydesdale gets to go to the big show. All our Budweiser Clydesdales have to be male, and so they're gildings when they're out on the road. Um, they have to have the, the, the white face, the bay in color, the dark mane and tail, and, and the four white legs. Um, the, normal, the normal Clydesdale will eat about 40 or 50 pounds of hay a day. Um, our guys get around anywhere from 4 to 8 pounds of grain a day. And um, on days like today, they'll, they'll drink upwards around 35, 40 gallons of water. During the course of the year, the Clydesdales appear at hundreds of events around the country. Parades, festivals, sporting events. Groups of 10 Clydesdales travel together as a hitch team. Eight Clydesdales are hitched together to pull the wagon, while two horses always travel as alternates. Like I said, they travel 30,000 miles a year, so um, we never keep the, the horses in the trucks overnight. We always have a stable we're staying at, even if we're transporting from, um, you know, on a two-day trip to get to another location to show, we always have a place where we're staying, um, so we never travel over 500 miles. And But other than that, I mean, they're, they're, they're in these trucks more than they're in any one single place, you know, in the course of a year. So that's their, their second home. When they're going past you in a parade, you can feel the ground move when those big horses go. And just the sounds of the wagon rumbling and the, and the horses rumbling and their feet hitting the ground and that. I mean, that's something you really need to see in person. Each Clydesdale is named. Their name, typically a result of their own personality or perhaps the circumstances surrounding their birth. After we wean them here, they'll go to Grant's farm for the next year, two years, and they'll just spend time 
<laughs> she's about slipped out. Uh, they'll spend uh, they'll spend time working with them, uh, just getting them used to the everyday grooming and, and that kind of the handling, the clipping. Um, when they're three, they'll go to Merrimack, New Hampshire, which is our braking facility, and they'll spend a year there getting broke to, to harness to the wagon and driving in with another horse, with four horses, with six. They'll try to get as much as they can experience on the job experience there that they possibly can do and then after when they're four they'll usually go out on the road and then that's the part where things that you can't teach at home like the bands and the noise and the flags and that kind of stuff and then they learn that that's really on the job training that part of it.